3 a.m. and the mama is tired like I'm so sleep it's been such a long day but team mom OG season 7 episode 7 I hope everyone had a great day had a great Monday it's currently Tuesday I'm just you know trying to keep it moving it's gonna be a busy week for me because so many shows come back on this week I mean, between, I think I have 17 shows I review, you know, each week now with all these shows coming back, I'm going to be tired. But luckily, I have two devices where I can record back to back to back to back to back. And we're going to keep pushing these videos off. We're going to keep these reviews coming. So, you know, this particular review episode, um, I liked it. It was, it was a cool episode, you know. Macy and, and Taylor, I don't know. I need y'all to get something else going on. Because in my opinion, we've seen too much of uh, Mackenzie and Ryan. Just want to put that out there. Um, but the episode starts off, we see Kate has went to the VMAs. And um, Tyler did not want to go. He is at, instead he's you know, at the house, what, well, in Michigan, um, having lunch with his mom. And, you know, they're just chopping up about things and, you know, how things are going and um, the new house and everything. And then they start talking about Butch. And, you know, she's like, you know, have you talked to your dad? You know, do you, you know what's going on? She's like, yeah, I talked to him. He's supposed to be helping build this fence. And she then says, well, I think he's, you know, up to something. He's, he's doing some things. And she thinks he's back on drugs. And, you know, Tyler says, you know, Oh yeah, I know he is. You know, I'm 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 sure he is because we, you know, he's he tells me these kind of things. Meaning his dad probably didn't told him I relapse. Butch has been on drugs forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Like he is a long time drug addict. And people know when you are a long term drug addict, you keep getting clean and keep falling back into the trap. Keep getting clean and keep falling back in the trap. That's the situation where he's, that's what he's doing right now. And, you know, um, Tyler said, like, he's kind of tired of dealing with it. Probably just meaning, you know, his dad is clean one moment, healthy the next. It's a back and forth thing. So, for him, it's also back and forth for him because he's having to see his father go back and forth into rehab, back and forth into jail, back and forth being on probation. And it's a whole cycle that he's lived his whole life. And... He has every reason, every right to be tired of it. And he just wants <clears throat> Butch to get his shit together. And I think that's what any child of an addict wants. It's the same thing that a parent of a child who is addicted to something would want the same thing. You just want them to get their shit together. And, you know, he has every right to feel that way. Um, next, we do see Kate and Tyler talking. Yes, y'all don't go person by person. Um, and they're just basically saying how um, Tyler says that he wants to talk to his dad about going to rehab. And at first, Kate was like, well, you know, so you're kind of not over, but you're kind of well, kind of over being mad at him. Because before, he was so mad at his father um, that he didn't want to deal with it or whatnot. And I guess now he's not that angry and he can kind of address it in his own way and um he's like you know i'm used to he said how he used to enjoy begging his father angry by calling him a crackhead when he was younger you know you're a crackhead or whatever and i think some kids do feel that way um because you feel like your oh, my battery's gonna be low. Let's let's hope my battery makes it through. That twenty percent, we should be good. Um, but anyway, he said he used to enjoy making his father upset, calling him crackhead, and saying what he used to do. And but he said, but he now has accepted the fact that he'll always be mad about it. Like 
he won't ever not be upset. He just needs to accept that. You get mad, you get over it, and you try to get him some help. That's kind of the whole cycle of being um, related or dealing with someone who's an addict. And Kate even brings up how, you know, children of addicts has every right to be upset and be angry, which is absolutely true. But for me, I felt kind of weird because, you know, Kate battles depression and I, not this is a few different mental things but I think at one point she had a little small addiction to maybe like smoking weed or whatever but because her issues is more mental and not a addiction like that I do wonder how her children would feel once they're older you know if they can remember the time that Kate went away to go to rehab things like that but I think it's true when Kate said you know when you're parent is an addict and they're consistently gone from your life you do hold resentment for that and you do be angry as you get older and older and older um the next thing we see is you know kate and tyler are basically trying to call butch and get in contact with them and butch has an answering and they are because he's supposed to be building their fence at the new house and everything and they're calling 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 he's just not answering going to voicemail so Tyler says, well, you know, usually when he's in work mode, sometimes he won't answer his phone, but he can also be getting high. You know, I think I'm going to go over to the new house and see if he's over there. And he ends up going over there, and Butch is there. So him and Butch are talking about, you know, building this fence around the house. And, you know, like, you know, if it's just me, I can have it done in like a week. And then Tyler, Tyler says, okay, well, you know, well, after that, you know, you're going to look into, you know, going away, right? And Butch is like, yeah, you know, I'm ready. And they're talking about, of course, rehab. And, you know, Tyler brings up, I don't think we, that you should go to like a little 30-day treatment thing or 60 days. You need it need to be something long-term. A lot of drug addicts who have been doing drugs as long as Butch has can't do 30 days because you'll go 30 days, you'll get clean, you'll be clean for a minute, and you'll get right back on drugs because you're just so used to it. He needs somewhere that's like a six-month, nine-month program where you are in the rehab, you know, you go through aftercare, like a whole, even a year, just a year of healthy, clean living before he's put back into the real world. And I like how Tyler is frustrated with his dad, but he's also honest with his dad and what he needs to do. Like, look, the 30 days ain't gonna work because it hasn't worked your whole life. You know, he brings up how he thinks how his dad might be scared to live a prison-free probation free parole free life giving himself too much freedom he's like if you think about it that you know my hope my mom has told me you know since you were 30 you've never you've always been on something whether it's on probation whether it's on drugs whether it's on parole whether it's on whatever he's always had something controlling his life um and that can also be a type of addiction. You don't want to be in control of your own life. So someone else is always telling you what you can and can't do. Um, and he can miss that when he doesn't have that. So then he does something that puts himself back in that situation. And then he's back under control of someone else again. Um, so, you know, we still see. And I think it was a good way to show their story of dealing with Butch and his drugs. So that was the whole Tyler and Kate um, uh, <laughs> scenes or whatever. Um, next we have Macy and Taylor. Macy and Taylor again I am, I need y'all to come up with something more. I'm not here for the whole Ryan and Mackenzie being on every single episode. Not here for it. I do not like Mackenzie. She gets on my nerves. I think she needs to, like, be slapped with a, a, a thing of humble pie because the thing, the thing that she said about Macy and the way that she talked to Macy and the way that she tried to blame Macy for Ryan's addiction makes me have a disdain for her, and I ain't over it yet. And, you know, she can kiss my ass as far as I'm concerned. Anywho, we see Macy and Taylor, and they're basically, you know, having a hard time balancing working from home, having the kids in the house, you know, running their business, and all this from the home. So, you know, Taylor suggests, hey, I think we maybe need to get um, an office space so that we can separate the two. I completely agree. It's very hard um, when everything is at home because you get my reviews. I review my stuff at home, but sometimes I get distracted because I get phone calls, get texts, you know, I just have other things that distract me because I'm at home. Um, I feel like 
once you just have a separate space to do work. Like, I'm writing a book. I'm trying to work on my teacher. Like, you know, I'm doing other things, but I get so distracted because I'm doing it all in my own house. So, if my phone ring and it's, you know, <laughs> people, I stop, have a phone conversation, or I might see a news story on TV and then that distracts me. Then I'm also posting stuff on IG or my it's a lot so i get exactly how a person can be overwhelmed when you're only at home working because it's too many damn distractions especially if you have children especially if you have children you know that's even harder um so we do see them go look at a space but as they're on their way to look at the space macy's like oh my god we have a problem now when she said it it scared me i'm thinking she gonna sell him oh my god one of the kids are hurt or oh my god Ryan is hurt because she, I mean, she said it as if it was life or death. Oh my God, we have a problem. And I, it made me think, well, damn, because he like pulled over. Cause she was freaking out. Turns out one of the shirts on their website had a misspelling, like property was spelled wrong. I'm like, girl, I need you to calm down. Because all they had to do was take the shirt off the website and like, you know, get it fixed. I'm like, unless you guys have ordered 18,000 of those shirts, the picture on your website is okay. Just put a new picture up and if you have and if you I mean if you have ordered a whole bunch of shirts, I get it, you panic. But I was like, you just said it was a shirt on the website that was wrong. Like the mock up. I'm like, calm yourself, girl. She she just scared me. Anywho, you know, they go to the this like office location. It's like you know how they have office buildings where you can literally rent in office and not like a whole floor or whatever it's like an office and it's as if you all work in the same building and that's your office except your everyone who works in this building owns their own company or their own brand i should do that i should rent an office and do my damn videos in but i don't want you know they you know they went and they viewed it or whatever it had like a whole little kitchen area it had like a, a beer tap i don't drink beer now they had a vodka tap or a Long Island tap, or hell, if they had um, a 7-Eleven Slurpee tap, <laughs> you know, even ice cold, I, I love ice cold water, I love, I love wine, y'all know I'm like on two wines that I, that I like, water and wine, you know, a Long Island, or Slurpees from the 7-Eleven, and you got me, you know, but I'm not, a, I'm not a beer person at all, um, but it was cool for what they needed. They just needed an office space to be able to have the computers, have a little bit of their stock, you know, have mock-up shirts and things like that. It made perfect sense. Now, the office they leased, well, was le trying to trying to rent, was like six, fifty, maybe like six fifty a month. That's not good. You can rent a you can rent a whole apartment for that amount. Well, then you have to pay like lights and gas and water and all that stuff. So you know, it is what it is. But you know. It, it's convenient and when you're trying to run a business that's just a part of it um it was like a nice little, little sun deck and all that stuff and it overlooked the city it was great so they did ended up um choosing to rent the space because they needed it so that part was great um ryan mckenzie so we see Ryan and McKenzie in there in the car they're driving. And it's so reminiscent of the time when Ryan was driving. And he was high and almost killed him. And, you know, this time McKenzie's driving. And Ryan's like, you know, can you slow down? And she's like, what? I'm just driving. He's like, you're going like 60 in the road. It's like kind of windy or whatever. And she's like, I've lived here my whole life. I know how to drive. And they were just kind of bickering back and forth. But for me, it was funny because I'm looking like, you were in the car driving fast high. Like, you literally almost killed y'all. At least she's sober driving. And you worry, calm down, little Moxley, calm down. So, they're kind of like a big range and, and she's like, you can't talk to me that. And he's like, you can't talk. It was a whole back and forth. Don't disrespect me. I almost don't care because, again, I don't like Mackenzie. And, you know, from there we see her talking to a friend, you know, after the whole car ride or whatever. And she's basically telling her friend, we know I didn't think it would be this hard. You know, it was easier when he was in rehab. And, you know, we're always up. We're always I'm arguing he's very short-tempered, and, you know, I didn't expect that. You know, I just never know what I'm going to get every day. Um, and for me, I'm looking like he was short-tempered before. For me, I don't see any difference in the Ryan before and the Ryan now. He's the same person. So what you surprised for? I don't get it. You know, she's just saying how daily, you know, um, 
she just doesn't know how she what she's going to get with him. He can be one person or the other. How it was very stressful. And you know how in rehab it was easy for him only because you know in rehab he couldn't get drugs. She's like, well now that he's out, if he wants to go get high, he can just go get high, and there's nothing that I can do to stop him. Um, and so she's like saying how that is scary for her because she just didn't expect it to be this way. Well, what way did you expect it to be? Um, cause once you found out his drug habit, he was a drug addict. I don't get how a person thinks when a person comes off drugs, things will be easier. I don't. I don't. And I feel like, is it karma? Because she blamed Macy so much, but now you're seeing Macy isn't the problem. Macy was never the problem. It is Ryan. And you just need to accept that. Um... Then we see Ryan and Mackenzie having a conversation. And, you know, they're at, like, dinner or whatever. And he's saying, you know, I like your hair. Your hair's nice. He's trying to be on this whole nice tip. And I feel like I'm like, was he re Like, they have a conversation before they went to dinner. She said, I need you to say these things because you've been an asshole to me. And so we need to get you being nice to me on camera. That's what I felt like it was. So I'm looking like, why all of a sudden is he so nice? I don't get it. Um, so he's saying how, you know, how he feels bad for another himself get so far gone in his drug addiction. You know, he, like how he kind of ruins everyone's lives and put everyone through so much, you know, from putting Mackenzie, from his parents, from Bentley. He's like, even Macy. I like how he admitted that he also put Macy through hell because, you know, for a while he kept blaming Macy for his shit and hearing him say, I put Macy through a lot. I can applaud him for admitting that out loud. I do wonder if that pissed Mackenzie off because Mackenzie loves to blame Macy. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, he just says, you know, he thanked Mackenzie for forcing him to go to rehab um, and then asked, like, what can he do to make things easier for her dealing with it? And she was like, you know, basically nothing you can do for me, basically. And she's like, I just felt like I lost myself in trying to be so strong for you. Um, I mean, when he said, what can I do to make things easier for you? I would have said you can communicate with me better. I feel like when a person is very agitated, you can just communicate in better ways. And that way, both people aren't agitated. I feel like they don't communicate right. Because, like, it's like they talk at each other. Not to each other. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a weird thing. Y'all need communi y'all need couples counseling. Okay? I can't catch them to you. So... From there, you know, when she's like, you know, I just feel like I lost myself. He's like, well, I told you in rehab, you know, you don't have to walk on eggshells around me. You know, you can, it's fine. You know, we can be normal. I mean, how normal can you be with a person who's on drugs? And that's kind of the end of the whole Macy story with all of them. You know, it was what it was. You know, they got their office space and Mackenzie and Ryan had their whole conversation where nothing was kind of resolved. Except he told her, you know, you don't have to walk on eggshells. And he admitted that he let himself get too far gone and you know he was a bad person so bravo 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 amber 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 is the cause of mostly all of her heartbreak simply because amber moves too damn fast in every relationship that she's in and that's just her way of fucking up her own life in my personal opinion um we see that amber is also at the vmas um, we see her and Kate there, too. We see Gary is there. And we see that she brought Andrew to the VMAs. And I was just like, didn't you just meet this man? Like, it was a first time going public as a couple. But I feel like you just met this man. And now you're at the VMA. But you know, it is what it is. And I feel like, for me, I feel a weirdness with Andrew. I also felt a weirdness with Matt. But I feel awkward when young girls date older men so that can just be my hang up because amber is young and andrew looks old enough to be her father in my personal opinion i mean he doesn't look 50 but he looked like he's in his 40s and she's in her early 20s so it's just awkward so you know 
they're at the award show. You know, they're kind of walking the carpet and everything. We see Gary walking the carpet too. And when a reporter was like asking him some questions, he kind of brought up, well, you're trying to, and, you know, say that Amber has a new relationship. Yes, she does. So the first time we do, you know, do you like him or whatever? He's like, well, I don't know. I haven't really met him to say if, you know, I like him or if he's cool or not. I haven't got to know him just yet. I would have said, I haven't even met him. So I don't know. That would have been my reply, but it is what it is. Um, so they show them walking the red carpet. You know, we see, uh, Amber, we see Kate, we see Andrew, like, walking behind them, too. And of course, you see him kind of, like, just taking it all in or whatever. And then later on, when the producer were asked, like, how did it go? He's like, it was so surreal, you know, with all those people just, you know, calling her name, you know, and she's like a star. And I'm like, this is nobody. And she's like, well, you're not a nobody, baby. <sighs> You're a behind the scenes person. He's like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't want to be, you know, the star. You know, I want it to be all about you and not about me. He seems, I, it's, he seems like he has facade. It's something about him I'm just not okay with yet. You know, he could be a great person, but something about him, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know if he's, I feel like he's putting on this facade for the cameras. And that could be why I get a funny feeling from, I'm not sure, you know, don't, don't quote me on it. So, they bring up also how Matt is still texting her crazy stuff. I don't see why Matt is still a part of the conversation. He's moved on. Girl, you got a whole new boyfriend, forget Matt. Um, because crazy exes will always text you crazy stuff to get your attention. Um, but there's this thing in phones called blocking. I don't get why he's not blocked. I don't get why he's so able to send you messages block them bottom line next um we then see how amber says how her and andrew are back you know in indiana i'm looking like but don't he live in a whole other state like don't he have a job i never get how people date someone and they just kind of move their whole life to a whole new state like matt did that was awkward and now with andrew like don't you didn't you have like a whole life elsewhere like how are you able to just you're just able to up and leave your whole life. It's just, that's weird for me. Even if you are financially stable or whatever, I'm not saying that you have to stay in one th in one place to work, but I never get how someone can just up and leave their whole life to be with a whole stranger. Awkward as hell to me. And so she's saying how she doesn't want Andrew to meet Leah yet. So she's like, you know, I'm spending time with Leah at Gary's house. But however, she has Andrew drop her off at Gary's and he has to come back and get her. So how do you think that your daughter and your people are not going to notice this man keep coming up and you have a girl, whatever. So her and Gary are talking and then she's saying like, you know, he's a really nice guy. And he's like, <laughs> Gary said, you don't have to pr prove nothing to me. You know, if you're happy, it is what it is. Um, and she's like, well, I want you to meet him. And he's like okay so when andrew pulls up and she's like you know do you want to be gary and he's like okay sure then here comes leah she comes out of nowhere so i'm looking like why would you assume that leah wouldn't come out and see this person you're there like she gonna be around so you know andrew got the car he goes to talk to, or walk up here comes leah christina comes out every so it's the whole family and i was like oh my god i'm so you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I didn't think the whole family would come out. Why did you, why? Why would you think anything else would happen? If you wanted him and Gary to meet with well, just him and Gary, you should have set up a meeting for just him and Gary. You can't want to just introduce them and think Gary's wife ain't going to come outside. That lead like, going to come out and say, well, Hoppo, who this man, mama? That's just what was going to happen. And so Gary meets some. Leah meets him because Gary says, hey, Leah, this is Andrew. This is mom's friend. And then Amber looks kind of mad, like, why would you introduce her to Andrew? But you brought, you, you brought him over there. If you didn't want, when you don't want someone to meet someone, you don't have them drop you off or pick you up, pick you up anywhere because you have your own car. You drive yourself because you don't want anyone to meet him yet. You are just waiting for it, for it to happen. I don't care what anyone says. Point blank, period. So, when she gets back in the car, she's like, I'm so sorry about that. I didn't think the whole family would come out and meet you. He's like, well, it's okay. You know, it's fine. If you say so. We see a small scene with Gary and Christina talking. And, you know, they're basically saying, like, well, we didn't get a weird vibe off, a, a weird vibe off of him. I thought he was nice. And Gary's like, look, 
I just want Amber to be happy. <laughs> just so that, you know, she's happy, then Leah's happy, and then she's a better mother when she's happy. The problem with that, in my eyes, is Amber should not need to be with a man to be happy and then be able to be a mom. If you can't be a mom without having a man in your life, something's wrong with that. Point blank, period. And, you know, it is what it is. Ugh. The last thing we see is Amber... And Andrew, like, you know, at dinner or whatever, having a conversation. And, you know, he kind of asked, oh, Leah was very nice. She was very beautiful. She's a beautiful little girl. You know, how often did you get her? And she's like, you know, I get her, you know, every couple weeks and, you know, every other Wednesday. What she should have said was, I used to always get her. I haven't been doing it lately because I don't have a boyfriend and I've been depressed. But I'm not going to go there tonight. Um, she then says, you know... Before I had her, you know, I didn't want kids at all. You know, then I got pregnant with her, and then it was like it all made sense. I only wanted her. I didn't want any more kids. She then says, but you know, and that's something else happens. We all know that she's pregnant with this man's baby now. And, you know, she was saying how she does not want to keep bringing different men into Leah's life. You, What you need to do is stop meeting men and liking them that first week or two, and then literally incorporating them in your life like date for a little while like he don't have to be at your house i am a firm believer in i don't even want you to know what's out of town i stay on because i don't want you in my personal life. again the first three months of a relationship of you dating someone of you knowing someone is a fucking figment of your imagination because it's pro it might not even be real you need to take at least three months to be sure the person is real because so many people have a facade that they put on in the beginning and you get fooled by the facade and then you stuck because you would been hooked winked and bamboozled and amber moves so fast with these people i feel like that's what happens she gets caught up in a the whirlwind they make her think that she, they're the perfect guy and then she's pissed off when the shit doesn't work out but I'm like, had you just gave up a long-ass time ago where you knew they wasn't right, or if you just took a long to get to know them? Well, Matt, she well, she knew Matt wasn't shit in the beginning. She just stuck around. I don't know why she did that. But, you know, for Andrew, I'm looking like, why is he beating your daughter? And y'all y'all could not have been talking maybe, let's say, let's say a month. Let's say a month. Maybe two. Maybe two. Why is this man beating your daughter? Why is he literally in your house? Why? 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 I don't get it. You know, so when she was saying how, you know, I don't want to keep bringing men to my life, then stop. But hell, let's hope he lasts home because as we see, she's now pregnant. And the weird thing is, on the next episode, they show her taking a pregnancy test. As in, so I don't know if this was the first pregnancy test she could have took. And maybe it's going to be negative and it's a trick. And she's going to find out later that she's pregnant because she's currently pregnant now. But my thing is, how and why on God's green earth would you be pregnant with a man's baby that you haven't known? You haven't even known this man existed for six months, let alone dated him for six months. This is a brand new human. This is He's, he's a brand new ass stranger. He's a brand new stranger who you're having a baby with. I just can't do it. You know, I just can't take Amber in. Oh, my God. And that was the end of her thing. You know, it is what it is. Farrah's was really easy. Farrah was in New York for New York Fashion Week. Fashion Week. Her mom's there, too. And the part to me that was crazy was... <sighs> her mama come in the door. They were one there for five minutes. And they are already arguing over the damn wedding invitation for Deborah's wedding. I'm like, why are y'all arguing so soon? You know... Because Deborah mentioned that she invited Amber and Ferris pissed off. Like, why would you? T I don't want to be have drama. You got Sophia crazy ass walking around with her ears, her 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 hands in her ears, her ears are plugged, and she's walking around just saying, you know, stop. I know what she's saying. You telling Deborah don't touch. Her. It was just awkward. It was just weird. I, if you don't like your mama, don't have her around. You know, don't have her around to so be be mean and nasty to her and the re th listen let's be honest the only reason that Farah has Deborah around is because no one else is going to shoot with Farah. Farah has no one else to shoot with and no one likes Farah. you know what I'm saying no, they don't and I would prefer to watch born as Chelsea from Team Mom to 
I would prefer to watch uh, Macy just sit and brush her red hair before I would just want to watch anything with Farrah. Because Farrah irks my nerves because all she literally does is whoever she's filming with it, she's talking bad about her mama. That's it. That's all. She, she's either talking bad about her mama or... Well, no, that's it. And it just is stupid, you know? And you doing it in front of Sophia, who already is picking up on not liking her grandma. So you've already tainted that little girl's image of her grandmother. It was just it was just stupid, you know? And then Farrah said, how you, you're like Simon, always bringing drama to my life. No, Farrah, you bring your own drama to your own life. And you need to just just accept that. It's just stupid. You know, we then see Farrah said, how she's going to have a professional come to show Sophia how to walk in a fashion show and i'm like oh that is what normal parents do that is beautiful then in walks a drag queen and i'm like your daughter is doing a fashion show and of all the professionals on the universe planet of earth and the united states of america you find a drag queen you couldn't find, like, another um, child model or just someone besides a drag queen. That's just not that. And I have nothing against drag queens. I love drag queens. I think they're very, very entertaining. I just don't think, you know, when you try to get a professional for your child, the drag queen is the first person you think to go to. And then Sophia was looking at the lady like, it was just so, it was just so weird and so fucking strange. I just could not take it. I was just like, you know, oh, it was just so stupid. So, you know, they go down to the car. Fear, I get checking her email and she sees how her mom sent her some article um, about, you know, why we marry, who we marry. Mom, what is this? Why are you sending me this? You know, I don't have time to read this. I, I don't, have, what is it about? If you didn't have time to read the email, if you were upset that she sent you the email, delete this shit. When someone sends you an email that you don't have time to read, delete this shit. When someone sends you an email that you don't want to read, delete the shit. Okay? To start a whole argument over email is the pettiest, I hate my mama, I just want to argue shit I've ever seen in my life. Sophia in the back, she's like, but you got to stop talking. <sighs> I hate, I just don't like this whole thing. It just gets on my nerve. You know, the end of it is, we see, you know, they do the old fashioned show. I have to admit, Fair looked cute. Sophia looked cute. It was a little whole little cute look. You know, it was what it was. But Sophia ass still scares me. I don't care nobody say the girls children, children of the corn 2018. Um, from the, it was a little scene where Deborah was saying like, maybe we can get a tattoo put on Sophia's forehead. So that way she kind of stands out from the other girls. I thought it was a normal suggestion that grandparents throw out there, that people just throw out there to say things. Fear acting like Deborah then went in there and tattooed Sophia her damn self, but like she done went in there and told people to do something. Fear, she was talking to your monkey ass, okay? She made a suggestion. Calm the fuck down and shut the fuck up because you get on my fucking nerve. It's just, oh, she hurts my nerve. So after the fashion show, when the producers are asking Farrah, you know, are you, are you happy you're ready with your mom here? Did you guys have a good time? Farrah like, no. Sophia, how do we feel? Sophia's like, not really. Why the fuck are you asking her? She's a kid. Let her stand against place. Anywho, you know, they're like, why? What happened? Well, you know, she's just always doing stuff, you know. She tried to change the, the designer's whole look, trying to get Sophia to get a tattoo on her forehead. I'm looking like, bitch, she made a suggestion to you. Why are you making it such a big issue? It just pissed me off. And because I don't know, it's just too much. She's then FaceTiming her father. And she's talking to her father about, I just don't get it. You know, she gave me an invitation to her wedding. You know, she put her, her credentials on there, which I don't know why, because she doesn't even do that anymore. I'm like, why are you calling your daddy to write about your mama? And the part that pissed me off the most is the only reason Farrah gets along with her dad and her dad's girlfriend is because they allow her to talk shit about Deborah, And they make Farrah feel like the shit that she talks about Deborah is valid. That's the only reason she gets along with them. Because they, they allow her bullshit to seem valid. They validate her and they should not. Because... <sighs> 
it's a fucking mess, okay? And that's all I'm, I, I'm, I'm just over it. You know, she's, she's the best. I don't know if I'm going to go to her wedding, you know. She needs to grow up. Farrah, fuck you, okay? I just can't. I'm, and I'm done. I just, I, I'm done. So, you know, that was the whole episode. You know, I'm, I'm completely over it. Farrah pissed me off because, again, you're calling your father to complain about your mother. And you're only okay with your mother, your father, and his girlfriend because they let you do that shit. If they told you, Farrah, you shouldn't talk to your mom like that. You shouldn't talk about her like that. Farrah would not fuck with them. They enable that bitch. And it aggravates my soul. So, that's my review of Team Ram OG. Season 7, Episode 7. I'm going to bed. It's 3.30 today in the morning. I got to go to work in a couple hours. And I'm done. Oh, wait, no. Because my battery just went dead again. Now I'm at 10%. So, yeah, it is what it is. We made it, people. But anyway, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace. <laughs>